Allie, as in most large districts, Jefferson County has a serious achievement gap. It's been referenced by some of the speakers. By some measurements, 20% of students don't graduate in four years, and 30% of those who do graduate need remediation to be ready for college. What would you do as a school board director to help close this achievement gap in our county? So I believe that this is an issue that Jefferson County needs to deal with. Um, our high poverty stats are increasing as the years go by. And in my opinion, what we need to address is early child education. That means full day kindergarten opportunities for every student in Jefferson County. And when we get beyond that, guys, we need to, we need to man up for preschool. We are the 47th state in the United States as far as full day preschool. We are the 43rd state in the United States of kids attending full day kindergarten. Early a, a strong start and early education for all students, especially our students in poverty, makes a big difference and we need to invest in our future. Thank you. Well, it's certainly going to take more than one solution to close the achievement gap because there's more than one reason why it's there. Um, so what's critical to me is continuing to find flexible solutions to address those problems. For me, some of what that means is continuing to look at programs like student-based budgeting, where at my school, despite significant growth, I, my kids go to Westwoods Elementary, which is predom predominantly impacted by the new growth in Northwest Arvada that you've heard about. And even with that growth, we have lower class sizes than we've had in the entire six years that my, student, my kids have been at the school. So things like student-based budgeting and flexibility, for our school it was smaller class sizes. At another school it might be a counselor or a specific course that they'd like to add to the high school. Those are the things addressing the needs of unique students and communities that will help close the achievement gap. Back in the day, when I was a teacher aide at Prospect Valley School and all of our elementary schools, we had something called Wisconsin Skills. Many of you may remember that. Um, we punched the card and um, we, when a skill was learned, and then when you were going to reteach the skill, you skewered the cards, and the ones who had mastered the skill, the cards fell out, and you had the identified group of kids who needed to be retaught. We need to make sure that all of our teachers are prepared with giving and teaching with all of our best practices that they have adequate flexibility to do what they need to do in their classrooms and that they're prepared to uh, teach all children even those who have different learning styles well i want to highlight one thing first and that is that jefferson county has served its students well for example we have one of the top three graduating rates in the nation and the other two uh, counties that have done the same spend quite a lot more money on their students and have median family incomes tens of thousands of dollars higher than Jeffco's. I also want to point out that in the nation right now, it is more likely for a college graduate to be from the top quintile in er family earnings, but from the bottom third when it comes to student learning. And when it comes to our lowest quintile of students, we have uh, are top third learners le less likely to graduate from college um, than the lowest learners in that top quintile of earning. So what that means is that it's two, two tied student success and family income. We also know that Jefferson County is better than 88% of the counties in the nation at bringing kids out of poverty, and that translates into thousands of dollars of earning. Is there room to grow? Yes, consistent, continuous improvement. And that will not happen if we have teacher turnover and instability in our schools. I believe that we've implemented some really great things that'll help close that gap. One is pay for performance. Two is now the board has a goal that focuses on all students. I don't believe this was part of the goals in the past, but now we have a focus on our students with the greatest growth gaps. Those are our gifted and talented students, our at-risk students, and our special needs students. I will never forget the day that when I was elected to co-chair of the Special Education Advisory Board or committee to the district when Dr. Stevenson did a presentation and she showed that our special ed children started here by middle school dropped to here and by high school only moved up a little bit. That is not acceptable. We need to have a focus on all students so that they all have a great opportunity in their future. You know, I'd like to echo Amanda. 
I think she pointed out that sometimes numbers can tell different sides of the stories depending upon how you look at it. So some numbers may say that we're failing and other numbers can say that we're being successful. I think the bottom line is, uh, first of all, full day kindergarten should be available to every child and family that want it, regardless of whether they can afford it. I think we need to make sure that school-based budgeting does not affect that choice at a school level. So schools with a lower income set of students should not be punished by providing full day kindergarten for their students. Um, I think teachers are the basis to improving this, this education gap. And I think right now the direction that this school is moving in is a disruption of that relationship between teachers and the school board. And I think, you know, once again, regardless if you're Republican or Democrat, we have to be able to be, compete with the other school districts in order to hire the best teachers. And we're a long ways away from that. Well, Senator, last spring, this district held an innovation retreat where we brought in experts from outside the district. And one of the biggest takeaways I got from that was to not necessarily look inside in the things we've done, but to look and see what has worked elsewhere as well. Now, we've seen significant progress made in the achievement gap in our neighboring district in Denver with schools like Strive, with KIPP, and with DSST. But we weren't able to attract that type of model in Jefferson County because historically, we had been less open to charters than in the past. This board has changed all that, and that is a very positive step forward. Another thing that we could do, and that we have done actually, is if you go back and look as far as 2006, we had some schools that were just languishing with that achievement gap in the Jefferson Alameda area. This board has taken positive steps to create the plan of Alameda and Jefferson, combine those schools and go forward and uh, that has just started this year. So I'm very excited about that. This is the most important issue. This is the issue that I ran for school board in 2009 to address. And unfortunately with the huge recession that we had, I was unable to do that. It was, it's extremely upsetting to me that that occurred. I'm going to be very straightforward with you because I've done a lot of research on this problem. When I was on the board, I tried to get the district to tell me what resources were necessary to put in place in order to help all kids succeed. A very simple question, but a very complicated answer. I never got that information. If I am on the board, I will again ask for that information and this time I'm going to get it because I will tell you we do not have the resources to get the kids that are not achieving up to speed. We are, the kids that have been in school from 2009 to now have lost $7,000 in revenue. John Newkirk mentioned the Denver School of Science and Technology. The reason that school is so successful is the millions and millions and millions of Bill Gates and John Malone dollars that have gone into that school to bridge that resource gap. If Jefferson County Schools had that kind of money in our neighborhood schools, in Jefferson High School, in Alameda High School, and supporting all the kindergartens, et cetera, there would be a different story, but we don't have that money until all of us man up to get that money. You are not going to see these achievement gaps significantly reduced. I am telling you the truth. You know, good research shows that over the past 30 years, spending on education has more than doubled. But academic performance, academic achievement hasn't improved. If you think money is the answer, You've been wasting a lot of time in education not looking at the real causes and focusing on what it takes to close the achievement gap. You know, we too on this board asked the district what needs to happen to close the achievement gap in some of our areas that are significantly at risk. But we got an answer. So this year we took bold steps with the Jefferson and Alameda plans to consolidate schools reduce transitions for our most at-risk students, increase community and improve facilities because we know those things will matter to those students. But you know what? We're not done because there is more to do. We're going to continue to ask the hard questions, drill down to get real answers, and make certain that we are focusing on closing the achievement gap, not just for at-risk students, but for high achieving students, for all of our students, for our special education students. We're going to ensure that we're closing all of our achievement gaps by working the problem, not saying more money.